Hello. Hey guys. Hi well, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another week of isolation. As you can tell, Ooh. nothing is different with me other than I'm in a different background. Clearly, that's the only thing that's different. <laughs> anyway, this morning we're going to jump in and we're studying Acts. Uh, Acts 8.1, one, one, well, not Acts 8.1, Acts 8 particularly. Um, and I hope we're all having a really good week. Uh, but just before we jump on, I'd really love if Katie could pray for us uh, just before we start talking about Acts 8. So maybe if you've got a Bible, open that while she's praying as you can listen to Katie. Mm, Jesus, Father, we just thank you that in this time of isolation that we have still have ways to connect to each other, Father, that you still want us to be unified as a, as a body of Christ. And I just ask that today, Father, as Joe and I speak to these guys through their TV screens, through their phones, through their laptops, that um, you just really use us, Father, to speak to their hearts and that that from this father that they will have so much more confidence and courage to to live out a relationship with you in isolation mm. Mm. i just pray for pray for good health father i pray for smiles i pray for good days um we love you amen 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 so just to set the scene for everyone because i know when people say acts eight usually not like we don't get these light bulb moments where we know exactly what's going on so just set the scene in Acts seven the chapter beforehand we know that the man called stephen uh, it's unfortunately he's stoned to death by a man called well by loads of people but Saul who some of you might know if you know him shout right now say Saul there you go thank Saul. you very much oh, that was really late thank you very much but this man Saul and maybe you know him because he's later on called Paul but he's really cool so he's just stoned this guy called Stephen uh, and it's happened and it was such a, a big moment it was like a catalyst it was something that, that started the fire uh, and from then on, all the Christians started getting really persecuted and they started to scatter and to flee and they had to leave their homes and they could no longer meet together in Jerusalem where they were really meeting. And that was their main meeting place and they had to um, leave. So they were all separate, all, all spread, weren't able to meet with each other. Exactly. Well, exactly. that's cool. I guess that's kind of like what we're in now, isn't it? I guess, you know, they had this event that, you know, Stephen was killed and this led to them all being scattered, which is... Mm kind of like what we've got we've had this yeah. crazy coronavirus event come about and now we can't meet we can't we can't go to church we can't go to youth on a wednesday there's no real way for us to be together physically i guess um yeah definitely. it's mad that like we can look look in the bible and i guess find exactly what's happening to us right now there exactly exactly so that, that maybe gives you a really nice context to frame what we're going to talk about because actually we're going to we're going to mm. zoom in onto one man, a man called, a man called Philip. Uh, and so we're going to read from Acts 8.26. I'm going to see if I can jump it on the screen. Oh, look at that technology. So good. <laughs> Acts 26 all the way to 30, 31. So if Kate can read for us, that'd be awesome. Yes. So now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Candake, which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. And then the rest of the passage goes on to basically say how Philip teaches this eunuch um, all about what he's reading. Yeah, especially I think uh, something to highlight about the, the, the second portion of this. We're not going to read it because we haven't got quite enough time. The second portion, he talks about how he, because uh, in this time, uh, we don't have the New Testament. It's the only Old Testament. And so at this point, uh, Philip, just, he, he teaches him about how Jesus is in the Old Testament. That's something we might come back to a bit later on, um, but that's really important for this point. But for the first thing that I want to pull up out of everything is that the fact that, that they, yeah, like, like Katie said, they were being scattered and it was a little bit similar to us. They were all in there, they were all fleeing to, to different places. Uh, but actually whilst they were being scattered, what's really, really interesting is that God has a different plan. God doesn't just want them to go into isolation and to completely shut down. Uh, but he has a different plan. As you can read in 26, God tells Philip so specifically, he says, go here, go to the desert. He actually even tells him to go more into the isolation. He says, go to the desert. Uh, and so whilst he's in the desert in the isolation, the, the, the reason why God sends him there is because he has a plan for him. He has a plan to meet this guy, this eunuch. Um, and I think it's really, really interesting that 
that we're in this time of, of, of isolation from church. We're not in the same building, but we are all on mission. And I think that's a really, really, really key point for this time, the season that we're in, is that we're actually, we're still on mission. Um, and it's so really- what can, So what can mission look like? Um, so like for me, I have quite an obvious mission field, I guess. Mm. I come home um, and it's quite clear that God sent me home in this time to, to make Jesus known in my household. Like my family, none of my family are Christians. So for me, like for my day-to-day -day living is, an, is my mission field in that sense. Like I can, I can do things like yeah. worship music, read my Bible and that for me is my evangelism. But what about people, like a lot of our youth, their yeah, families are Christians. Like they're living in households like you. They're living in households full of Christians. How can... How can that be their mission field? Oh, 100%. I think also another really interesting thing is, is Philip had an angel appear to him to tell him to go on mission. Uh, and maybe we didn't have an angel appear to us to tell us to go into isolation. We had Boris Johnson tell us to do that. So maybe, I don't know, maybe you can pull a, pull a something from that. <laughs> but anyway, I think, yeah, like, like you say, Katie, like we are in isolation. We are, we're in, the, in that time um, of, uh, of isolation. But we also still have a, a mission field. Um, and our mission field is is anyone, is anyone that's around us, uh, anyone that's, that's, that we can talk to, anyone that we can love, anyone that we can tell about Jesus. I don't know whether that is, is uh, maybe your neighbours, you get to cook them and bake them a cake and just when they ask you, why did you bake me a cake? You can be like, well, I love Jesus and Jesus loves you. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be these big things like Philip where he went into the literal middle of a desert and he literally had an angel appear to him, but they could be little things and small things. Um, but I think it's so important in this time that we don't we don't just become so inward focused. We think about what we want and how we feel depressed, maybe, or how we want we want to do other things. But we can actually start looking outwards, just like Jesus. I'm sure Jesus did not want to be in pain, but he chose to suffer um, so that we could know the good news. So I think that's a really good thing in this in this season that we can pull from this passage. How even whilst we're being scattered, even in isolation, we can still be used by God. To, uh, to share the good news that we all know. Um, so I think that's one really, really important thing. But the second thing that I really would like to pull uh, is about the bit where Philip starts, like Katie said, Philip starts to teach him from the Bible. I don't know about you, Katie, but I think some parts of the Bible are really, really difficult to read. Yes, yes. I think that was probably my biggest barrier when I first became a Christian was how do I read this massive book? Like, like how how do i where do i start like mm. how, how do i get the motivation to read this like um i think there are so many so many different ways that you can even think about reading the bible but um i guess some for me some of the best ways was um how i came to christ was through jesus so i want to find out about who jesus is so reading the gospel good, yeah, so um good. is probably one of the best ways to start it's you know find out who this man was that died for us like find mm. out where his love comes from what he did um, it's such a great way to start and I think it yeah. puts so much into context as well I think that's um, so especially yeah. if we bring it back to this passage like imagine if Philip didn't know Jesus imagine if Philip didn't know the good news even if God put him in that position where he was even if God had sent that angel to tell him to go to somewhere mm. if he didn't know who Jesus was if he didn't know anything about Jesus and he couldn't explain it to him then this 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 man that God had uh, had said he wanted to really touch on that day he might have missed out. So I think that's such a good, important point, actually, when we're studying the Bible, especially in this time where we have a lot of time to do things. I think a really important thing might be that we, we take that time out and we really study the gospel. I think the gospel of John is a really yeah. nice one to study to begin with. And we learn about who Jesus is, not only so that we know, but so that maybe when God puts us in those positions where, where people ask us questions, maybe maybe not right now at school because we're not at school, but maybe in the future at school or maybe when other people, I know, like for Katie, when her family ask her about why does she, why does she believe in Jesus, she can answer them in a way that's really uh, that's understanding because actually she knows who Jesus is, not just not just some facts about him, but she knows who he is. So I think that's a really good point. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think as well when you when you you find out more about Jesus and his character, I think you start to see um, where he is everywhere in the Bible, not yeah. just. The gospels that tell the story of his life where they are in some of the hardest books to read and, you know things like like lamentations or you know just that some of the the books that are really really difficult to get that motivation yeah um, but when I, guess that Jesus in back, them, I guess that brings us back to the, what we said earlier how actually in, at this point philip didn't have the new testament he didn't have the gospel so he couldn't yeah. say oh here in the gospels it tells you about jesus 
but actually he goes back to the Old Testament. In this specific case, he talks about Isaiah. And this passage in Isaiah, okay. if you have time, you should really read it. It's a really cool passage. But everywhere in the, in, the, in the Old Testament, if you really look and you know who Jesus is, you can find him. For example, there's a really interesting bit. Maybe you know this about Moses and the burning bush. And the burning bush, and Moses says, who shall I say you are? And then, this is my best God impression, FYI, so don't laugh. And then God says, I am. That was pretty good, I thought. Oh, yeah. this is all right. He says, I am. And actually, Jesus later on, in, in, we know that he says, I am, I am. So and he is, he is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus was in the burning bush. So I think it's so important for us in this time to not only just study the easy bits, I don't know, the, the bits that we like, like the Gospels, but also to really delve into the harder bits, maybe. And uh, I think yeah. we have a couple of, I don't know, what's alliteration with Joe? I don't know. Tricks with no, Joe Wicks. Joe Tricks are oh, so good. Some Joe Tricks for reading the Bible. And I think number one is we have the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but um, I believe in Jesus. And because I believe in Jesus, I believe he gave me his Holy Spirit. And when, when we're given that, it says that we are given the mind of Christ. So when we read the Bible, not only can we just, we know with our own mind what we can read, like the word. But we can read with the mind of Christ so that we can understand it really. We can really understand it and not just read over these, these massive pieces of, of text and think they're really boring. But when we read it with the mind of Christ, we understand it. And when we understand things, then we can really get to grips with it. And we can really, we can find out who Jesus, who this Jesus guy is, what he's all about. So I think tip number one, Joe Tricks tips with tips number one is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Use the Holy Spirit is so useful. And I think yeah. Joe Tricks, trick number two is Google. I'm telling you right now, Google is a life send. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. People ask me questions about Jesus and I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know Katie might ask me a question and I'll go, I don't know. And then I'll go over and I'll, I'll Google it. I'll just be like, okay, how many people did Jesus feed? with two loaves and one fish. And then it tells me, oh, Jesus fed 5,000 people, you know, simple things like that. I think Google is a really useful thing to use when we're studying the Bible. And there's a really, really cool app called Bible Gateway. I don't know if you can get it on, on any of your devices, but really useful when we're studying the Bible to understand it. I think tricks, Joe tricks, trick number three is people. So easy. Mm. Just, just just, like we're talking now with me and Katie, you can talk to anyone. You can talk to me and Katie. You can talk to James. You can talk to your parents, maybe. Uh, you can talk to your friends. And use people. People have been uh, following Jesus for longer than you and I. I can tell you that. And when people follow Jesus for longer, they sometimes build up more, more things that they know about Jesus. So it's really useful. When we don't understand something in the Bible that we can ask people. I know this week I've asked uh, one of my mentors, about some other things because I didn't understand them in the Bible. It was really useful because he was able to teach me and, and tell me what it was really about. So I think tip, Joe tricks, trick number three, to use people. And I think Katie has one more tip about maybe using different versions. So hopefully she can- Yes. So this is amazing. So I, I assume most of you um, have the Uversion app on your phone. Um, and the amazing thing with this is it comes with so many different translations of the Bible and there have been so many. And um, one thing I find really helpful is when I, when I find a verse, I will click on it. You can click on it and then compare and you can see all the different ways this verse is written in different versions. Um, and these versions are so good. So you've got versions like the message, which is literally just like tries to summarize these verses to just give you the most like understandable yeah. way. Of what is this passage yeah. saying? And then, you know, you've got other ones that will be as accurate as what they were written, like try, try to be like using language they were written. But I think in a translation, try something else. Like words speak to you in so many different ways. And I think you can find that. Um, yeah. So translations are, are super helpful. Definitely. I think that's such a good point. So that's four tips that you can use right now yeah. when you're studying the Bible. Not only so that you know Jesus, but like we said right at the start, so that we can tell people about who Jesus is. And in this time of isolation, maybe in this time of, of quarantine, when we feel like we can't, we can't spend time with people. Actually, I believe, I believe that this week, that God will, will make opportunities for you to share the good news about who Jesus is, just like he made an opportunity Amen. 
they made an opportunity to share with the eunuch on the road whilst he was in isolation too. So the Bible backs us up. So I think that's where we're going to end today. And so I'm just going to pray for us. But I really like if next week you could maybe tell us an opportunity, maybe a moment where you were able to share the love of Jesus with someone in your life. So that'd be awesome if you could do that. So I'm just going to pray and then we're going to wrap up. Okay. Sound good, Katie? Sounds good. Perfect. So yeah, Dad, I just thank you that we get to spend this time. And I thank you that your word does speak to us, even in this time of isolation, that even in this time that we think that no one will understand what we're going through, you understand what we're going through and you've already made things uh, and you've planned things that we can, we can experience in this time. So I just pray for, for everyone who's listening right now that we'd really delve into your word this week and will we use those tricks to understand your word into a deeper way, not only that we can love you more, Father, but so that we can tell people about who you are with confidence and with that uh, true love of you. So I just pray for everyone on this call right now. And I just thank you that, that you love them so much. So I just pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We'll see you guys soon. And I can't wait to hear some of your stories. <laughs>